Hello again, everyone. I'm Stacey Edwards, Education and Outreach Manager here at the UB Seismic Research Center. And today we're talking with Professor Richie Robertson, who is currently in St. Vincent as the ongoing eruption of Las Tufre continues. Good morning, Richie. Good morning, Stacey. And we're very pleased to have you here this morning to give us an update. Um, it's almost a week since you've been there, a little, no, a little under a week. Can you tell us what the team has been doing since you've been on island? Well, we arrived, I think, last week, Thursday, but you're correct. It feels like it's been a week because it's been very long days, long hours, um, as expected. Um, we expected that. So what we came to do and what we've, to a large extent, been doing, of course, within the confines of the fact that we're still under quarantine, so we can only, we can only operate in a bubble is largely put in new monitoring sites. Um, so we have been trying to install new seismic stations and new what we call GPS stations, which monitor for changes in, in, in shape of the volcano, which are indicators of, of various things, both of them, seismics and the GPS. Um, and in addition, we are looking into, and we have actually already installed a, a webcam that allows us, a camera that allows us to see the volcano, certainly currently from Belmont, we could log into it and see what it's doing. And our plan is to put in at least two more cameras, one on the other side and one on the summit, probably one or two at the summit, if we can, depending on, on various things. So additional monitoring um, and, and also advising the, the public and the authorities about what's happening. And what can you tell us about what's happening at the volcano? What is, what is the update? Well, it's the same, more or less, the effusive eruption that began on, on we think, somewhere on, on Sunday after evening is continuing, which means that magma is coming beneath the surface of the earth and it's slowly oozing out onto the, onto the, onto the crater floor of, at the volcano. And as it comes out, it, it becomes cool, forms solid rock, and it's essentially forming a small dome. We have called it a satellite dome, like it's a baby dome to the big one that is there. And that has continued at, at variable rates since we arrived, and since, in fact, since before we arrived, we arrived. And so does that continue to pose a danger to surrounding communities? Because I know we have been receiving and supporting Nemo and sending the message that people should not be visiting the volcano at this time. So does that therefore mean that um, it, it poses a danger to surrounding communities as well? Well, no, because we believe, as it is in this stage, this effusive stage, which is one of the ways in which Supra can erupt, the danger is confined largely to the crater floor and the immediate surroundings, which is the crater rim and probably the city one, not the upper one third of the volcano. Basically, people who, if you, if you go on the crater floor or if you go on the rim, you're putting yourself at danger. Um, even without anything happening, the, the first, the main, the danger will be the, the, the smells that you have. Um, and if you're in the wrong place, the, the sulfurous smells can sort of make it very difficult, and very uncomfortable at the very least for you to breed. And if you have, if you have problems with asthma and things like that, it makes it more difficult. So the danger is still summit area and not the surrounding landscape, not, not the communities, um, like Chateaubelle, which is the closest one. And so is that, is that why, because um, we've been getting questions as to, well, if we're telling people not to go to the volcano, how come the commu surrounding communities have not been evacuated? That's yes, that's precisely why. Um, the question of evacuation comes to a large extent when the volcano goes explosive. And why it comes is because when it goes explosive, the material goes up into the atmosphere, it produces a lot of ash, but one of the dangerous things from the volcano is then that, that, that column that goes up in the air collapses on itself and then goes down the, the valley slopes and it reaches further out along the lower flanks of the volcano. And that's where people live, along the lower flanks, close to the coastline. Um, it can only get there if it goes explosive. And it isn't an explosive phase. The fusive phase are going to, is going to be confined to the crater rim um, and, and, and the crater floor. Explosive would be for our field. And do we think that we'll have sufficient time or warning time um, to get people evacuated in the event that we think that it's going to be an explosive eruption? 
we that's what we're hoping well, that's what we're planning for we think so once we get all the kids in once we want it in the volcano closely um we, we think that we are working towards as science as a scientific monitoring group we're working towards giving nemo sufficient time to move people out of harm's way um you know the, vol it, the situation in volcanoes and volcanoes are, are very uncertain so um you know it's there's always the possibility that uh, things will happen faster than we expect but we're working arduously. We're keeping a pro side. That's why we're doing all the things so that we provide, provide them with the warning. Um, but even, even outside that, as, as they work towards this possibility, once they put plans in place, once people are able to move fast and they have all those plans in place, um, you know, that even with that uncertainty, you should have enough time to get people out of harm's way um, if it goes exclusive. Okay, and so just to come back a little bit about the sulfur, um, people yeah. have been saying that they're getting strong smells of sulfur. Is that something that's that's dangerous? Is that something that people should be concerned about? Uh, not unless you're at the summit itself. Um, the sulfur has always been emitted from sufre. Sufre had a fumarol there that was always emitting sulfur. But the rate at which it's emitting has increased because you have fresh magma there. Um, and therefore, this, the, the flow of, of sulfur smelling gases in the atmosphere has increased. But most of the gas that comes out of the volcano is actually just simply water vapor. The, the water in the crater is being boiled and, and steam is being created. And a lot of that is steam. The volcanic gases, which are sulfur rich, they, they're not so much dangerous because they get diluted. The, the concentration of them in the atmosphere when they get to where people are living are really very slim. So they have a strong smell, mm -hmm. but the smell is not going to cause you harm. The, the thing that's going to harm, cause you harm is the chemical composition and the concentration is too small to cause you harm. So people should be concerned because it tells you the volcano is still doing something. Yeah. But you shouldn't be concerned if you're in the lower flanks that is somehow going to, to make it, um, you know, you're going to be in harm in terms of, of, of if affecting you in terms of health. Um, so that's, that's not a, a thing to, to worry about. Okay, and so what can people expect next? Well, if it keeps, if the volcano keeps on doing what it's doing now, at the very least, the dome will become bigger and bigger. Um, and as it grows and it gets bigger and bigger, it's going to fill in the space that you have in the crater. And it is possible that it will become big enough that it gets close to the crater rim. And as it gets close to the crater rim, it's possible that in the night, the, the, what we call the incandescence, the fact that you have hot material and the hot material, it glows in the night. And we call that, we say it's incandescent. That glow might be visible from surrounding areas as it gets close to the rim. That's the first thing. So you might actually see that before anything else happens, if it just goes on effusive. But in addition, there's a lower lip to the crater that as it gets bigger, it's possible that some of the rock that's coming out, the hot rock, will spill into that, 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 um, that lower lip. And as it does that, it breaks up, and the gases in it comes out, and it produces these little flows that are very hot, and they will go a little bit further down the flank. Now, fortunately, the lower lip of the crater leads into areas that people don't occupy. There are no villages down the down, down valley of that. Um, so it wouldn't be compromising any villages, um, but again, it's a possibility. It's, it's therefore going to generate more ash and more steam, and people are going to see it being visibly more active, even in the effusive stage. And, um, and, and we're able to tell when this might happen? Well, one of the things that we do, and we're trying hard to do, is monitor the growth of the dome because of various reasons. So yes, I think once we are able to see it, we continue the observation flights. Once we have all the cameras in, once you have more stations at the summit, we will know how, how we will know before it actually gets to that stage that it has gotten to the stage of past parts going to start growing because people can see the top, almost the tops of it or else it's going to spill over. Those are some of the things that, at, even with effusive eruption and this eruption, we'll be looking at making sure that we're certainly in a position to tell before it happens, before people see it, that it's about to happen. Okay, thank you very much, Richie, for the update. Good luck to you and the rest of the team.
And we would just like to remind people that the volcano still poses a very dangerous threat to those in the near vicinity. So people should not be going to the summit of the volcano at this time until the authorities say that it's safe to do so. And would also like to remind that the NEMO and the UESRC are the official sources of information for updates on Lasso Fred Volcano. Take care, everyone, and be safe.